Shout out to my friends over at Surfshark for sponsoring today's video. I like the drama. Keeps you relevant. Bitch, you a big fat slouchy bitch. <laughs> I don't think I spread was my leg. I f your daddy. What the f do you think is gonna happen? This is probably the most this problematic thing you said. Say it. It is what it is, and I'll probably get canceled again after this. Just one last thing. Give it to me. Why does block you? What's the tea, everybody? Thank you for tuning in to another Mistress Monday. And you know what? It would not be Mistress Monday without some crazy, chaotic it has been a while since I've had a collab with a Drag Race girl. Now, I know what you're thinking. I just shredded the DragCon girls with Lux Noir London, but I'm talking about real Drag Race superstars. This is one of the biggest stars of the RuPaul's Drag Race stratosphere, quite literally. She is the lip sync assassin. She says she's been robbed one too many times. She's most known for no scrubs, and I'm thinking Barbie girl. So I'm gonna mix the two, and I'm gonna give her the ultimate transformation. This is one of the craziest bitches I have come to know, but most importantly, my mother sister. Help me welcome to the channel the one and only Silky Nutmeg Ganache! Ah! What is the tea, honeybee? What's up? What's, what's the given? Because you've already had an attitude since the second you walked into my studio. And let me tell y'all something. We were supposed to film this video like six months ago. We get over here and then she's like, let's go eat. We never made the video. Then Malaysia came down here, we gonna do a video. And then my power went out. It's always been a mess. And she finally got me here and I don't have no nails. Y'all know I always have a full set of nails. But mistress, I come over here and I run and I bend my back and you I run. break my back. I do run. You I'm jog. not getting a bad gastric sleeve. I am running. Okay, That's let's it. address the rumor before we even get into today's video. They were tweeting that you were getting the gastric sleeve. I'm begging you. Please, please reconsider. Explain what you actually were saying. I said that I do not want the gastric sleeve. I was on my fattest child at her womb. Please, let's take a moment of silence for that woman's kitty cat. You miss you. She pushed me out. Ooh. Black women are strong. Hello. Vote for Kamala Harris, November 5th. Yeah. Clock it. We always get told that we need to get the sleeve. We Who need to get on. We need to get on oh 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 zip it. We need to get on oh zip it, right? Y'all do. Are you talking to we the plus size or are you trying to No, I'm me? saying we as if somebody's on it. Who? That's so messy. Brooklyn Heights. <laughs> I like the drama. Keeps you relevant. Is that the secret to your relevancy? Do you feel like you're always in drama? That's the backbone of your career, bitch, and you talking about. You know what? I don't get in drama. What I do is I add an ingredient and I'll like stir the pot and then I'll just watch it like simmer. Y'all hear that bitch squeaking? That was crazy. <laughs> get up to the bitch was squeaking a little too much for my liking. It was being very creaky, very like it, it, Sean, amplify the audio. You know what? <laughs> Bitch, you a big, fat, slouchy bitch. Slouch. Oh, wow. You know, so, what's the secret to, like, a true scandal? Like, be unhinged. What is, like, the biggest drama? Like, the one that sticks out to you, like, ooh. When you and Vanji were in PV? <laughs> <laughs> the coronavirus super That's spreader. not the biggest one. I went to All Stars, like, two weeks afterwards. <laughs> What is the biggest one, though? What is the one where you're like, damn? It was the one when I fucked your daddy. And it got out. I f your daddy. And they came back out talking about That is riding, that, that is riding the line of when she said on when your season aired you said Shut that. the f up. Because I know exactly what you're gonna say. What did you say? This is probably the most this problematic thing you said. Say it. We're not gonna go there. Girl, just paint me whatever you wanna do. Okay, so you're known for the Barbie girl lip sync. You're the lip sync assassin. Now, there's been some girls out there, Robin Fierce, Lux Tomorrow London, they said that you're not really the lip sync assassin. That they were kind of slouchy. Only thing I have to say to the girls, they will hope and pray to get moments that I have. I just wanna say that I spent $300 on season 11 and I made it to the top four. Charisma, uniqueness, nerve, and talent. And I like to add an S to it, cause I am c what a list. I was really inspired today by the Barbie girl half and half lip sync. We're gonna make you half trade and half like beautiful glamazon. If you say so, you know, I don't like to look like a man, but. We're gonna put you half drag king then. Half drag king and half drag queen. Does that work for you? No, cause you gonna put too much makeup on me. I'm trying to be done with it. You're lucky I didn't go with my first idea because I was thinking of all the beefs you had. Originally, <laughs> I was gonna turn you into pheromone. What's your issue with pheromone? I never understand the problem. I think pheromone is a lovely young lady. That's not what you'd be saying on the Twitter space. Give it to us. Because if I recall, you said, she said when she sees pheromone and Fifi O'Hara, she's gonna whoop both their ass. On site. So what's the, what's, what happened with pheromone? This is, give it you to them. 
<laughs> Baby, listen up. This message is for all the boys and girls of the world. If you tune into Mistress Mondays, I know one of two things has to be true. Either you're a troll or you're addicted to the internet. Either way, you should be using a VPN and that's when Surfshark comes into play. As you know, I have been banned from countless websites and social medias due to my shenanigans, but Surfshark is perfect for going around IP bans. That way you can give your apologies and hopefully get unbanned, like me. Surfshark also allows you to change your virtual location. That way you can unblock and access restricted content libraries that are sometimes geo-restricted. I mean, you can literally change your location to a different country and unlock all of Netflix's library if you wanted to. I mean, there's so many shows and they just change it everywhere depending on where you live. That is a thing of the past using Surfshark. Surfshark also liberates your internet experience by unblocking blocked websites and bypassing geo restrictions which eliminates censorship. So what are you waiting for? Unlock your internet's full potential and secure your data by using Surfshark. Click the link in the description and use the coupon code MISTRESS for an extra four months free over at Surfshark. Now baby, it's a no-brainer. Shout out to my friends over at Surfshark for sponsoring today's video. Thank you. Enough talking and let's jump right into today's video. I want my money. <laughs> You know, let me give you tips and etiquette for being a lady. So, you know, you sit like this and you go, well, in response to the question, I would say, you know, Pheromone and I do have a couple issues, but we would definitely deal with them at a later time. On sight. Pheromone, you heard it here. With that being said, let's turn her into the heavyweight champ. Okay, so listen. I think it's time for us to jump into it. Maybe you was yapping a little too much. We're gonna have to chop up the intro, but let's jump into it. So we're gonna be kind of dipping into the Barbie girl half and half. We're gonna make you half trade and half woman. You know what I mean? We're gonna give half drag king, half drag queen, half like, you know, masculinity, femininity, little one, two, this is me, be who you are for your pride. You were telling me that the Barbie girl has you kind of traumatized. Why is that? What is the tea with that? Well, I did a lot of work. You know what, let me give my first disclaimer of the video. Look directly into them. You're a working girl. These brushes are gonna look nasty and tore up. The makeup's everywhere. All that stuff. Mine usually don't look like that, but my last gig, I was outside, because I usually clean my brushes as I go. I've only performed the Barbie Girl two other times. It just put me in a, like a bad headspace. Like, a lot of people call my lip sync sloppy, this, that, and the other. You know how you're in the work room, you have full access to everything? Uh -huh. I didn't have access to everything. Oh, because you were in the hotel room. Because I was in a hotel, so I made everything literally out of what I had. The jumpsuits were cut in half. The guitar was made out of pizza boxes. Oh, they didn't supply you anything. The, anything. Like, oh, not even crazy. Not even nails. Because you know you have nails in the workroom. Uh -huh. And it was the last day and I had told them I'm not going on stage unless y'all get me some nails. And that's how I got nails. That's crazy. So were the, were the lip syncs all filmed in one day? Or like they were literally weekly? They were weekly. And then like a lot of people's like, it's cheating because Silky had that. When I got my iPod, my iPod only had one song on it. I didn't have a lot of songs and they would give me the iPod at the same time they gave the other girl. That's the thing people don't realize with Drag Race, for it to be like an unscripted reality show, there's a lot of legal things they have to follow so they can't cheat. Like, that's mm -hmm. like for them to be like qualifying for like the Emmys and So you basically have the trauma with Barbie Girl because it's just a part of it. I don't do any of those songs. Girls want to have fun. Song for the Lonely was my favorite lip sync of all of them. And is what you use for your bass? No. <laughs> That's all I was about to say, right because to be casket ready, they're gonna be calling me Elliot with two- Let's not take it there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you've been in the Drag Race. How long have you been- When was your first season of Drag Race? Like, what year did y'all film? 11. We filmed, I think, at 17. That's what? Like, almost like seven years ago? Almost seven years. That is f***ing insane. Okay, so you have had the scandals, you have had the drama, you've had the experience. But let me ask you this question. No one ever talks about, like, for instance, on your season, you had Soju, who now they consider to be canceled. Mm -hmm. Like, do y'all keep in contact? Do you talk to them? Or do you feel like you just cut her off? Like, I talk to her every now and then because I lived in Chicago and Soju was from Chicago. A lot of people don't understand there is stuff that, like, is not our place to say when it's it comes not my to place. certain things. Yeah. Soju is in her last year of law school and I'm proud of her for that. And yeah, that's all I can say. Like, I don't really believe in cancel culture because I think the the people that are most outraged are the people that do it themselves. Like for example, when I went to PV, y'all was outraged that I was there, but y'all wasn't outraged that your friend was there recording it. Actually, you kind of ate that. No shade. Okay, give us the background story to the PV. I'm starting to realize you're the cancel queen of Drag Race. First of all, what people didn't understand is when COVID happened, my grandmother was forced to retire. She was a school teacher for 
uh, nearly 60 years. My grandmother was forced to retire. She was a teacher for 60 years. And my mother was my grandmother's caregiver. My grandmother was having a hard time. And so my mother asked me to move home to Mississippi. Before I took the trip, I got the permission of my mother. And I said, like, if you don't feel comfortable, I won't go. But my mother was like, go because I was struggling in Mississippi, like mentally. I was dealing with the traumas of living in this house as a kid. It was, it was just a lot on me. And my mom told me to go and I went. I didn't have COVID. I quarantined before I came back and got around my grandmother. It's so crazy because what people don't understand, U.S. had less regulations and laws than Mexico. If you went anywhere and your temperature was up, you had to go straight to the hospital. Where in America, people were going directly to Florida. So y'all mad at me, but you hoes went to Miami. You should have kept your eyes home, you fucking super spreader. I don't, I don't think I spread was my leg. You know what? I have to come and draw this out of her. I don't fucking support soju. I don't support coronavirus and super spreading. Cancel this woman one more time. Let me go home then. You want me to go home now? Please. Girl, I know you <laughs> your lines. How did they expose y'all though? So someone just in the club recording or what happened? We were outside. Well, because he, like you said, he was there too. They was there too. So you, you mad at me, but your friend's there. That is kind of crazy. But the thing is, we weren't inside. It was outside. I honestly don't feel bad because... <laughs> you don't feel bad, No, I'm going to tell you why I don't feel bad. Because I got the permission of my mother. It is what it is, and I'll probably get canceled again after this. And like, <laughs> okay. cancel me, honey, because y'all be canceling everybody but yourselves. But I'm just, that's me just being honest. I did feel bad because I did have like a college professor that sent me a message that was just like, you know, Silky, come on. We expect more from you. And it's a little disappointing. And just to get a message like that, you know, it's like a little like, oh, well. But at, in the same breath, I took all the precautions. I was outside. And the shade was, now this is the real tea. We were caught. There were a lot more drag race sisters down there that didn't get caught. Girl. Like clock that tea. Didn't Shangela start selling? hand sanitizer now that's shady wait so what did Vanjie say when y'all were getting canceled because she be is sending me wait i don't think a lot of people know you and Vanjie were roommates please give me this story and what that was given because i could not imagine living with that woman that we're sounds torturous neighbors y'all were neighbors okay what was that given it was fun like bitch she ordered some food but like i know you'll like this and she'll send it up oh it was during covid before covid so y'all were just having a field during day. the whole season 11 a half hour gigs were with each other you know so it was always fun would you say she's the, uh, who you're closest with from your season oh yeah i'm still really close with her what about I'm still close with her. <laughs> Girl, you're so shady. Uh, Girl, air it out. Girl, I still haven't talked to her. Girl, why well, I kind of painted the f out of that one little eyebrow. You Look at me. You no, I'm like kind of gagging. Eyebrow. I'm kind of gagging. Girl, that's fish. Girl, because they be saying I be tearing bitches up on this channel. Silky has about a 30 pound bag full of makeup. So when did we progress from the Sharpie brow to now we're using Anastasia pomades and all these brushes? I still use a Sharpie during Pride Month. During Pride Month. Cause I, I sweat a lot. Uh -huh. I should have my own makeup line. Down. I was supposed to have a meeting with the crayon case about doing a collab. The week I supposed to have my meeting, her boyfriend took her to Paris on a surprise trip. So I never had the meeting. But I, I, I feel like I should have a makeup collab. I don't give myself enough credit for how well I do makeup. I do makeup very well. Okay, so you have always bounced back from being the cancel queen. Seven years strong, fully booked, mini but mansion. Honestly, I don't know if it's because I'm the cancel queen or people try to make me out to be an individual that I'm not. So if you had to choose from all the drag race girls of all the international, the US, who are the top three drag race queens you think are the most painted? I want y'all to know one thing. There's a difference between most painted and most beautiful. Uh, clock, you kind of ate that clock that to you. Yeah. Because a lot of people be like, oh, when people tell me that I'm painted, I kind of get offended by it. Cause well, I, you want to be most beautiful. I want to be beautiful. Baby, let me tell you something. When I used to, the couple pageants I have done, you could ask my assistant, if I did not win most beautiful, I'm throwing a fit. Because to me, when now, I'm painted with food. the, when I'm with the white lid and the black, that's fish to me. That's, In what way? That's fish. That's beautiful. That's painted. You, you're one but, of the most painted. But I'm not the most beautiful. Mm -mm. Who is the most beautiful to you? Me. Honestly, on All Stars especially, Banji's so beautiful. Banji's glow up. Banji used to look fucking painted. wise crazy. Yes. I think another painted queen is Chanel. Oh my God. Were you there when Calorie slayed Banji? Was that your season? No, that's season 10 or whatever. Oh no, your season was when Aquaria did that awkward fucking, y'all's little promo thing was so awkward. Oh, the, yeah. <laughs>
Girl, what were y'all thinking? That was a hot ass mess. Why was it like that? that? That's what they prepared. We didn't prepare that. And I didn't want to do it. In reality, y'all only called the big girls sloppy in Drag Race. There's a lot of skinny girls doing a lot of sloppy stuff. But y'all let y'all give them a pass. I think not wearing pads and titties is uh, sloppy. But y'all go up for it. You know, I used to be like, I don't know, because it's hard because I was raised similar to that mindset where mm -hmm. like, you know, they be saying that backstage, that that's just the standard of drag here in Texas. Mm -hmm. But like, I think as I become a drag race when I've toured, I think there are exceptions to the rules, but I do think that a lot of girls would benefit from, you know, being bodied out and like dressing to, that's the beauty of drag is you can make it look like whatever. But you know I think what I mean? the exception to that rule is getting garments that are made, that to, made to make you look more feminine. And I think somebody, who is great at that is Naomi Smalls. Naomi Smalls don't, you know, pay it, but she accentuate her waist. You know, it, it's sickening to me. Mm. Honestly, sickening. But a lot of girls haven't mastered that. Like, if you got out there with nobody, they'll read you. Girls like me, that's why I was saying the except to the rule. Like, girls like me, sometimes we be naturally bodied. You know what I mean? You remember you was telling me about that first episode of Canada vs. the World? What about it? How somebody was bodied and they really wasn't. Who? Oh, so now you don't remember when it's time. Let's, go, well, well, let's put it on. Well, let's put it on. Who? You said the Elephant Queen. <laughs> they had no pads and nobody on on their runway. Oh, my God. That's what you, that's what you said. That's messy. This can't be the second week we mentioned the Elephant Queen. We got to let her rest. You know what, Eureka? We're sending our love. Are you... A woman during the day out of drag, what do you, how would you describe that? I'm Silky. My You're pronouns silky. are she and her during so, the day. So she and her during the day, but would you consider that non-binary? Are you trans? Because also like, I, I joke around a lot. I'm so ignorant when it comes to like identities and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I genuinely like, I, I have people explain it because I don't want to offend people. And I really don't know. To be honest, I, I personally think one of the, the things that I dislike the most about our community, I love our community, but one of the things that I, I dislike and I don't partake in, we like to put labels on everything. And I feel like if you're a female presenting, you're a female presenting. If you're male presenting, you're male presenting. And in my case, I'm always female presenting and my voice don't get clocked. My look don't get clocked. If I go to the airport right now, they're gonna say ma'am. And if I attempt to go into the men's restroom, they're gonna be like, excuse me, ma'am, that's the wrong restroom. Has it always been that way? For most of my life, actually, yes. Uh -huh. In high school, they used to call me a little lesbian. They said I look like a little lesbian when I had my taper fade. You know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. I, I just particularly don't like the labels. And so when I date, I tell men, you know, this is me. I was about to say that that can get complicated very quickly. It, it gets very complicated, but the guys that like it, like it, and the guys that don't, don't. But I've never had any problems with it. I was just like, I, I understand that I'm on the fence. And I teed and talk a lot, mm -hmm. but that's just me. And if you like it, you like it. If you don't, you don't. You know, I feel like there's a lot of drag queens that identify that way. I had the conversation with my family. They know my pronouns are she, hers. When I go into public, my mother called me her daughter. My brother called me his sister. And that was our conversation. That's all it was. They know that I'm going through a legal name change and I want to get body work done. Does that mean I'm going to have to explain more stuff in later in life possibly but for me i have always lived my life on what's understood needs no explanation so when i was growing up i ain't never had to officially come out we, i had got to college and my grandmother had a family meeting that asked me officially uh, or uh so what is what and i was like yeah I like men they were all a little shocked that i finally had like admitted it but it wasn't me finally admitting it by this time i had two or three men in my life so it ain't like it's just... It wasn't new to you. It, was it wasn't like, new to me. It was new to them. Yeah. Putting labels on stuff, you got to explain. And I don't feel like I owe none of y'all no explanation. When it comes to the boys, I'll be like, you, you want it or you don't? And trust me, they want it. What's your body count? That's the number one question I ask everybody on the channel. I think six. Six fully penetrative all the way, one, two? <sighs> no, I don't do penetration like that because I'm... On your side. I'm trying to save my for my husband. So you're a virgin. You're, Something like you're that. Half a virgin. I feel you on that one. Open your eye for me. Girl, no shade. Why is she kind of zainted right now? So the body count is six. That's actually very beautiful. I just, when I get married and I give this bougie to somebody, I want them to feel like it's their first time. I want them to feel like, and I want them to bust. 
right then it is. Oh my god. Because it's gonna be so tight. Yes. <laughs> Girl, you know I'm a virgin. I'm actually saving myself. I feel like, like you got towers. You shouldn't call it walls. Because oh. it's wide and deep. Why do you say it like that? Because what I saw last Sunday. So you know what? I always hate this because I always have girls who've been out with me. Well, I always ask this question too. How would you describe a night out with me? Like what is it giving for you? Let me tell you something. <laughs> Look at the camera when you say, what is now, a night when, out with when me? When I go out with mistress, I live in a suburb. I ain't living in the gay Montrose area because I done got too old. So mistress would call me the day before. She always called me the day before and say, Silky, we're going out. I don't want to hear no excuse, no bullshit. We're going to go out on Sunday. It's always a Sunday. Always Sunday. She One time she said Saturday and I said, come on girl, I'm ready. And she talking about, no, nah, not tonight. And we went out to eat instead. And then we went out the following Sunday. Uh -huh. But it's always a Sunday. And to go out with mistress, mistress always trying to find me a boy because... Because I always have a boy. She always have a boy. <laughs> she always kissing on some boy and they're always smaller than her. It's like a bulldog on a little chihuahua. <laughs> but she know what I like. And she always get these boys to come up to me. You gotta work a magic. They, 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 be, they be cute or whatever a little bit. Well, would, okay, you see me with some guys what would you say my type is they have to be latinx mm -hmm. they have to me on the other hand i'm the whole you in over here i done had everything uh -huh. i like men uh-huh yes and men like me she want a latina no more than five seven and i think she want them like that because you know little men be having big old you got to be able to be a good kisser oh i love a makeup this is what let me tell you something now that's what we do have in common because when i'm out yeah. i do like to make out and she do too you know i think it's time for me to settle down soon i want i'm ready to settle down i want to have kids before i'm 40. really so if i don't have kids before i'm 40 i'm not gonna have kids but i you want the full fantasy so you want to be like married and like you want to mm -hmm. do your one too i want to be married i want a husband i want to be able to cook dinner every day i want to take my kids to school he be working on a car and I bring out lemonade and cookies. My kids come out and I be meeting them at the bus. Come on kids, let's do our homework. Every night before we go to bed, I ask my husband, would you like some? Oh my God, <laughs> sister. Every night, cause that's a part of my fantasy. You're a pleaser, you're a pleaser. In that sense. Girl, you know what? We believe in manifestation on this channel. So how many years do we have to 40? How, what are we working with? Six more years. In six years, we could find you a man to settle down with. Uh, the kids, I don't know. Because how long would you need to be with someone to like have kids? Would you yeah, need to be two married? Years. Married for two years. I'm need to know you for a year, marry, okay. honeymoon for a year, then magically get pregnant. See, I don't know. A year is, that you kind of lost me there. A year is such a short span. But I'm also 34, and I'm at a point where we ain't got to be playing around. You want, you know what you want? It don't take more than six months to know if this is going to work out. You know, I kind of think that way, too, though. I feel like when you get older, people are, like, ready to get serious. Yeah. It's like, you know what it's given. I'm older now, you know? Tell the girls what they need to look for. When they don't, when it's, how do you know when the, when the going's done? My thing is when a guy won't commit to me. They just won't commit. And not in a, in a bad way or anything. If we sit seven months in... And you still got to decide if this is what you want. It ain't gonna work. It's six, seven months. And we old as f Not old, but we're in our 30s. Like, it don't take no rocket science for you to realize if this is what you want or not. You know what? I'm not gonna lie. Steven, you know why every look on this channel has been the fool? I think I'm only used to painting black girls from like doing the girls in pageants. <laughs> right. <laughs> I'm so serious. Because why do you look so sickening? I'm like kind of gagging. I know how to paint the white girls real good. Who? What white girls are you painting? I you know what? Mm -mm. So, how you put the picture of Soju. I was going ham. But then, too, it's not my fault. When you have to paint yourself and somebody else in an hour and 45 minutes, it, it get a little crazy. You you already know. And I probably should have practiced more. I should have done a lot more. Was that the only makeover you've done on Drag Race? Mm-hmm. And you know what's crazy? I have worn now a ball, Rusical, Snatch Game. I feel like I have to go back to Drag Race to win a twin challenge. Okay. I really feel that way. I was thinking about that the other day. You got it here okay. before I even posted it. So you welcome, mistress. I want to go back for a twin challenge, and I will win it. So you've done three seasons of Drag Race, but you're still willing to go back. Yeah. I love that. Let me tell you something. I like to compete. That's why I did pageants. I love to compete. I love the competitive edge. And half the time, when I'm arguing with like one of our sisters on Twitter space, I'm not doing it because I'm trying to prove a point. I'm just doing it because I like to, I like the, the, the about it you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. like everybody thought me i was mad at lux the other night mm -hmm. and what the end at the end of the thing what i say lux is that the music you did mm -hmm. 
on your thing because I was like, I saved it so I can do a video. You know, I always support, even to um Robin Fears, I really didn't mean, like, I didn't mean it. Like, it just got a little, little crazy for me. And I'm just like, bitch, what? You know how things, you know, I forget, like, some of our sisters are a little more sensitive than. I was on season 11. We didn't like each other. We really didn't like each other. Even while the show, like, before, what about before the show aired? Y'all still was already at each other? Absolutely. In the group chats, it was going down. Girl, that's crazy. We didn't like each other. At least my season waited till when the show aired to stop liking each other. Oh, no, we, we just didn't like each other. There were fights. All Star Six was the same way. That's crazy. Well, you know, I always tell people too because they expect us, that people get so attached to their relationships on the show. Getting like 10 plus drag queens together, that's, bitch, none of us are gonna like each other. But you, it's not even that. Y'all in the audience are crazy because y'all be fighting. When you put 10 to 15 broke ass drag queens in the same room and dangle $100,000 in front of them, what the f do you think is gonna happen? <laughs> we all broke. Bars don't wanna pay us more than $50 for a fucking booking as a local queen. So we get this opportunity, we all see the $100,000. Only thing that we know is we broke. And on season 11, I can promise you to this day, my goal was not to win. My goal was to make a career. And guess what? I have that career. What's like one of the biggest things you've done like after Drag Race? Like what is the one thing you've been like, oh shit, I did that? I still can't believe I was on Germany's Next Top Model. I was the Rita Franklin impersonator. Well, I didn't see that. Right after season 11, it was me, Vanjie. Oh, cool. um, what did Vanjie do? She was Cher. I did a campaign for Got To Be. I still can't believe, well, I, was, I think I was the third choice for a celebrity drag race. But I think the thing was for two years, I got to talk at colleges and universities and mm -hmm. education is my passion. And I want to do more public speaking and talking on panels, you know? So what projects do you have coming up? What can the girls be expecting from you, babe? I have my podcast out that y'all can go listen to on iHeartRadio. It's called What's the T Christine from the Famous Line from season 11. And it's um, a podcast where you get to know more about me, my bad stories, and I get to just be real. And I talk about everything from church to sex, to my childhood, to the hurricane that I went through. And it's it's a really, really good podcast, um, honestly. And it's just me being vulnerable, something that y'all didn't get to see on television. So I let it all out on my podcast. I have decided for the rest of the year, I'm gonna focus more on me. I have a weight loss goal and I'm training. I've always wanted to be on Broadway audition 12 years ago. And so now next year I wanna audition for Broadway. Shout out to Jinx for that because for a very long time I didn't think it would be possible, but seeing her and Angelica Ross, shout out to Angelica Ross because Angelica Ross was first. She was the one that really inspired me and I went to her opening night. I wanna be in a movie. What kind of movie though? A Tyler Perry Medea movie? Or I, what are we I doing? honestly, I really wanna be in a Tyler Perry movie. I see that for you, it's why. Um, <laughs> I don't know if you'll make the role for me, but I want to be in a Tyler Perry movie. So we're manifesting a lot here. I don't know. I, I was focused on the man. Now we're talking about Broadway and Tyler Perry and... The one thing, you know, like, now that we on Drag Race, did you ever imagine that you would have this YouTube channel, that no, a sensation? No, no, never, honestly. That's why I'm saying, baby, I, trust me, I believe in the power of manifestation. I, I truly do. When, when things are supposed to happen, they're gonna happen. I'm not rushing anything. I auditioned to be on Drag Race one time and I got on and it has been a blessing ever since so sometimes it's been crazy i've got canceled but other times i've been here and i've enjoyed the sisterhood and i enjoy it that's as sweet as saint lucia okay so i think that we have yapped enough we have a lot to manifest we have a lot to just you know hone in we're gonna take the chakras and the crystals and align everything we're gonna you know the power of life and death is in the tongue but with that yeah. being said enough yapping i'm gonna go finish her lips and lashes and we'll be back with the full transformation now introducing the original heavyweight champ the lip sync assassin Silky Nutmeg Ganache! Oh my god, girl. It literally is giving Silky Smackdown, bitch. It is. Now give him the full reveal, honey. Look into the camera and give him both sides. You want me to give him the whole reveal? Give him the whole reveal. You sure you want the whole reveal? Oh my god. <laughs> It's giving. RuPaul, put me back on the, on the All Stars, girl. Let me win. Let me win, RuPaul. Don't eliminate me, girl. You chose the wrong big girl. Okay, how, so describe Silky Smackdown to us. Like, do you feel like, or are you the Lip Sync Assassin? Did you whoop all them hoes? Like, what is it giving? I am the Lip Sync Assassin, and guess what? If you don't like it, that's on you. It's on you, because Mama Ru deemed me that. What? So, what did Mama Ru deem you hoes? And if you got something to say, bop, 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 bop. Bitch. 
Bitch! 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 Oh my god, stop, Suki! Don't, don't pull her hair! Oh my god, I want to say thank you so much to my special guest, my true sister. Y'all know I don't use that word lightly, bitch. This is the true sister. I want to give a special shout out to my sister, Suki Now Meganash, for coming through. We had a good little kiki. Hopefully, y'all don't cancel us, but you know what? If you do, <laughs> she's unbothered. This is the true lip sync assassin, and you know what? Let them know one more time what they should be on the lookout for from Silk. Y'all make sure that y'all listen to my podcast, What's the Tea, Christine, on iHeartRadio. This week is the final finale episode, so listen to What's the Tea, Christine. Also, maybe I'll be going back to school, maybe I'll be dating, maybe I'll be losing a few pounds. But before I go, I just want to say one thing to Mistress. I think you about to hit me, bitch. Oh, no! Let's say... Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, do your big one. Y'all already know what it's given. Baby, if you've made it to this point in the video, you better like, comment, subscribe. Every Monday is Mistress Monday. I have so much beautiful, amazing content coming through. And you know what? It's really about to be a smackdown because I'm going to have to beat up. Ah! Bye. <laughs> Click the link in the description and use the coupon code Mistress for an extra four months free over at Surfshark. Shout out to my friends over at Surfshark for sponsoring today's video.